Welcome to this edition of Sports Medicine Concepts Informational Friday Series. My name is Mike Sondoma and I'll be your host for this session, during which time we'll be taking a look specifically at the Riddell Speed Flex football helmet. You can visit riddell.com to get a good inside look at the technology built into the helmet, but our objective here today is, is not to pass judgment on the helmet itself as a product, but rather to see if the helmet presents any obstacles relative to any other football helmet that we need to plan for in the event that we need to manage this helmet during care of a critically injured athlete on the field. So for today, we're gonna to be taking this out onto the field to see how it responds during traditional management protocols. Whatever protective qualities any football helmet offers us is greatly dependent on proper fit. So before we go outside, I've asked my local Riddell rep, Kyle Fenn, to come in and help us with proper fitting techniques for the Riddell Speed Flex football helmet. Okay, as part of our review of the Flex helmet, we're going to start by proper fit of the helmet because as you guys know, properly fitting a helmet to begin with makes sure that any protective qualities that are built into the design of the helmet are available to us. So a really good reference for you to look at, which I just found recently, was an article in the Sports Health magazine. Um, and there's a link to that which actually demonstrates uh, the importance of proper fit of a helmet and how you can uh, get better protective quality out of the helmet when it's properly fit to begin with and a maintenance program throughout the season makes sure that it's properly fit and properly maintained. So I have with me here today Kyle Fenn. He's my local rep from Riddell who's going to go over proper fitting techniques to make sure that we have this fit properly to begin with and from there we can go on with the rest of our assessment. Okay, today I'm going to be fitting the uh, Riddell Speed Flex helmet. Uh, the first thing you want to do is make sure you have a fitting tape that measures the circumference of the head, measuring approximately one inch above the eyebrow to the biggest point in the back of the head. And then we're going to take a measurement, and our player is just over 23 inches, which is fits in our large shell. So what I'm going to ask our player to do is you're going to take the helmet, put your fingers inside the ear holes and press out on the jaw pads and then bring it onto your head as an, on an angle. Once it's snug on his head, we're not going to do anything with the chin strap till I get the proper fit with, with the air inflation. The most important thing when we're inflating the helmet is to have a bottle of glycerin. This lubricates the needle so that you don't uh, puncture the valves. There's five inflation points at the Riddell Speed Flex helmet. The first one is our top inflation point. This is going to raise the, eye, uh, the helmet just above the eyebrow to approximately one inch above the eyebrow. Uh, just know that if you don't need any air, it's not necessary to put it in. So right now we've got to fit approximately one, one inch above the eyebrow. The next two inflation points one being just on the back portion of the helmet, upper back portion of the helmet, that's going to inflate the back and side part of the helmet so that it comes clean to the forehead. So it's just on the back, kind of up towards the top point. As, um, as I pump, let me know if you feel that. Feel? Now I do. Yep. Okay. The last inflation point is in the back of the helmet. This is going to get the um, lock your helmet into place with the occipital stem. Okay, you can turn back. And now what I'm looking for is I go, please keep your neck stiff. As I go up and down, you'll see that the forehead is moving with the frontal pad of the, of the Riddell Speed Flex. Same thing when I go side to side, as I move side to side, try to keep your neck stiff. And as you can see, the forehead is moving with the pad, that's what you want. You don't want it slipping, you don't want it dropping over the eyebrow. The last thing we want to do is to check, interlock the hands on top of the helmet and press down. Do you feel that on the pad on top of your head? Yes. Yep. And that's what you want. You want to make sure that they're, on, it's, they're feeling that on top of their head, not on their eyebrow. The last two inflation points are for the jaw area. All you want is for a firm, firm placement on the cheeks. Um, as of right now, he does have firm placement, so we're not going to inflate them, but the two inflation points, one on the right side and one on the left side of the ear. 
And now we're going to lock his uh, chin strap into place. So if you can hold that there. So the top two are now in place. Now the job of the player is to grab the bottom two and pull it through the ratchet system. to get a proper fit. So his helmet is now fitted properly. In order for him to take it off, he's going to put his fingers just above it and press down on the clip, the silver clip. And as he's pressing down, hold it down and pull out with your thumbs. And then take the helmet off at an angle, just like you did when you're putting it on. So. That's the general fitting procedure for all Riddell helmets. We were fitting the Riddell Speed Flex today, but for all Riddell models, that is your, your fitting procedure. Okay, one question I do have for you, Kyle, is once I have this properly fit, or, or once our athletes are properly fit, how often should we recheck the fit of the helmet? Ideally, you should recheck it every day. I mean, chances are you won't need to get air adjusted every day. Um, it's an easy way to do it uh, if you put a mirror up in the locker room for the kids to go by and they just do that the same thing to make sure that the, the helmet is an inch above the eyebrow, their forehead is moving with it, and they're able to feel that top pad instead of on the eyebrow on top of their head. Um, in terms of having to put more air in it, it's all dependent on your position, uh, weather, temperature, some kids may need it every other day. Some kids may not need it for three weeks. Um, and that's, that's the other thing. If you're in a range where you're either in a medium or a large and you're not sure, I always take the, the smaller helmet first because a properly fitted helmet, you'd rather have less air than have to over pump a bigger helmet. Uh, and, and one other question I just thought of while you were going over that. So in, in the... Um, in the coach's kit or, or in the sideline kit, what, is there any particular equipment that this helmet requires that, that, that be in the toolbox for, for the helmet to make sure that game day or during practice we have what we need to make any adjustments on the field? Yeah, I mean, you, ideally you do definitely want a bottle of glycerin. I mean, you can buy glycerin through Riddell, but my recommendation is CVS or any pharmacy will sell you a bigger bottle like this um, because you do want to be able to lubricate the needle with glycerin, not with spit. So the glycerin, and then you also want the Riddell pump. If you're using Riddell helmets, you absolutely want the Riddell pump with the um, smaller needle. Because if you're using a bigger needle, a ball needle, you're, you're probably gonna go through the back of the bladder. These are designed specifically for the Riddell helmet. I didn't know that. Um, the other thing you might wanna have in your, in your kit is a, the Riddell quick release tool. This releases the pins. Uh, in case you have to change a, uh, change a mask out or you have to get a mask off a player for injury purposes. Um, and, a, and a Phillips head or a, or a straight head screwdriver, just in case you have to do something with the chin strap. But once that's locked into place, you shouldn't have to. Okay, very good. Kyle, thank you very thank much. You. I appreciate your time. Good seeing you. Now that we have a good understanding of the manufacturer's technology built into the Speed Flex helmet, as well as its proper fitting instructions, why don't we take the helmet out onto the sideline to see how it responds in the event that we have to deal with this helmet during management of a potentially critically injured athlete. I've lined up a player, a coach, and an EMT to help us out. So let's go. Okay, here we are out on the practice field to do our practical review of the Flex helmet. I have with me today Coach Petlin. He's an integral part of our emergency action plan here and one that I can rely on to help me uh, and is also uh, pretty well versed into some of the techniques that we're going to be using today. I also have one of our premier linemen here in the league, Engage McManus. He'll be helping us out by being our athlete. And also one of our local EMTs, John Monkern, who is also one of our newest instructors with the In Two Minutes or Less program. So let's get to it. Before we got underway, we double checked the fit of Gage's helmet. We chose Gage in part because he actually wears the Riddell Speed Flex football helmet. We chose to do this review right after a typical practice so Gage would be sweaty, better replicating a true life scenario. The first thing we were interested to see is if the Riddell Speed Flex presented any challenges during the traditional log roll used to reposition an athlete from prone to supine. Not surprisingly, we found that the Riddell Speed Flex presented no significant challenges during completion of the log roll or when establishing and maintaining neutral cervical position. 
Next, we wanted to see how easy it was to remove the Riddell Speed Flex using traditional spine injury protocols. We first wanted to know if we could efficiently remove the Riddell Speed Flex to access the athlete's airway without face mask removal. All we did was loosen the chin strap. In the event of an airway emergency, we found the Riddell Speed Flex to come off very easy without any special helmet prep or face mask removal. On three, I'm going to remove the hat. One, two, three. Okay, on three, we're going to clear the ears. One, two, three. Okay, on three, I've got them on three. One, two, three. Next, we wanted to look at how efficiently we could access the airway via face mask removal, and if helmet removal was affected by first having the face mask removed. We left the chin strap uncut on purpose. There you go. Okay, I think I, this was actually off the answer. Yeah. All right, so go ahead and pull that. In this particular case, the face mask came off quite easily, giving us immediate airway access without having to remove the helmet. When we did remove the helmet, having the face mask removed prior didn't seem to make a difference. Okay, on three, we're gonna pull the hat. One, two, three. Okay. Coach, if you're gonna be ready to pack and fill, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Okay, we're gonna clear the ears on three. One, two, three. In previous practice sessions, we had difficulty getting the quick release fasteners to release. Here we offer two suggestions that resulted in more consistent results. Remember, as the manufacturer of the FM extractor, we do have a bias. With that in mind, we found using the Riddell quick release tool to be better suited for putting the face mask back on. Consider the FM extractor quick release end effector or an inflation needle to disengage the quick release hardware. Make sure you keep the push pin pushed in all the way as you simultaneously pull the fastener out. And apply pressure to the back side of the receptacle as you push in on the push pin. Implementing these suggestions should give you very consistent results with face mask removal from the Riddell Speed Flex football helmet. In this segment, we changed out Gage's helmet so as to avoid damaging his helmet. Best practice face mask removal protocols call for a combo tool approach using a backup cutter in the event that helmet hardware fails. Here we use the FM extractor to see how easily we could cut the Riddell Speed Flex fasteners. We also cut the chin strap this time prior to helmet removal. So overall, we like the Riddell Speed Flex in terms of the fact that it poses no significant challenges during management of a potentially critically injured athlete. Personally, I think it's really cool looking and it feels really comfortable on. But like with any other helmet, it's imperative that medical teams familiarize themselves with the Riddell Speed Flex and practice protocols on a regular basis. Thanks for watching this edition of Sports Medicine Concepts Information Friday. Be sure to subscribe to us and follow us on Twitter to be notified when new content becomes available.